because i kept 100 even i kept 100 percent volume is it better now no still it is the same right same Just logging into the application right now. You must have received the new password. Correct. So I'm now going to share. So yesterday what we had done was we had created the customer. We saw for a customer what are the things that are needed for defining the customer. Uh, we looked at the account of the customer, the site address, the site purposes. And then we also saw when we are creating a transaction where the customer is popping up. Mm -hmm. okay. Now customer uh, creation is part of the what we call as the party. So whenever a customer is created, uh, customer, supplier, uh, bank, all they are part of the party architecture. When we say party, party means it's a level above the customer. Bigger, your sound is, your volume is going down. Uh, it's hardly, I'm finding very difficult to, you know. Today it has been raining here, so the fan is also off, so there is no background noise. I don't know why the sound is coming so low. And if I do a test also... No, it is very feeble what you are talking now. What I was saying is, today there is rainfall here, so the, the sound is also, uh, there's no fan also, so there's no background noise. So, this is 100% because... Are you using headsets or a? Yeah. Okay, can what about the volume there? Level of volume level? Oh, this is a USB one, it doesn't have a 
volume for the sound here. Yeah. Let me increase this to hundred percent. Is this better now? Yeah. Comparably better, correct. Okay. All right. I'll also try to speak up so that you know there's no issue. Yeah, this is better. So today we will be seeing how we enter transactions, how we create transactions in the system relating to the customer. And uh, like I was telling you, uh, customer for a customer, uh, customer is part of the trading community architecture as it is called, where we have parties. So customer is a party. The party is related the different entities that we have talked about. For example, the customer and the supplier, they might be the same. The supplier may be selling goods to us. The final goods product that we are selling may be purchased by the supplier as well for his consumption. So the supplier can become my customer as well, right? So in this way, these entities can be related between themselves, supplier or your uh, banks and can banks can become your customer. And um, so in that case, there it is essential to have a relationship between them, which earlier before TCA was introduced, it could not be done. Now, in Fusion, they have included the TCA solution right from the beginning. Whereas in the earlier days, before in eBusiness Suite and all, when there was no TCA, there was customer, there was supplier, there were two different entities. It was very difficult to inter interlink them. In TCA architecture, as a party, it is possible to know that the same entity is doing relationship as a customer and as a supplier as well okay so through these we try and keep track of the transactions that the customer is going to doing so under billing when we get into billing under the tasks we have all these transactions accounting customer account balances and customers so when we created a new customer for that customer we can create a new transaction so we'll say create transaction now for a cust um, transaction yesterday we have talked about this there are three levels here this is the header information right at the top that you see here, starting from transaction class down to the customer details. Then from the next section, you have the invoice lines. So this is one table which holds the data, RA customer TRX all. And then invoice lines is RA customer TRX lines all, which has all the line details. What are the transaction details? Okay. So first thing to choose is what transaction you are doing this transaction class as we mentioned as we discussed yesterday is one of the seeded setups provided by oracle so when we say invoice invoice is something that we are selling to our customers for which we are going to generate it's part of my business. It's something related to a service or a product that I am selling to the customer. Transaction type is the invoice. I could have other transactions also uh, related to this transaction class. You will find all of these are invoices. Okay, but they might be for different purposes. These values are uh, Oracle provided or uh... Transaction type is what we can create. Okay. Some of so. them will be there, but mm -hmm. something beyond anything beyond that, we'll have to, we can create as per our need. But transaction class, we cannot create new. Correct. Correct. 
So I'm going to create a new transaction. Bill to customer. This screen is almost a replica of the payable screen, right? Uh, similar. Similar, uh, because where uh, you know we receive from the uh, supplier, here we are going to give to the customer. But also we can create an, uh, uh, sorry to go back. Yeah. Also we can create an, uh, you know, uh, login for the supplier also, right? To access our system and you can create his own invoice. Can you do yes. that? Yes. Okay. In that case, an approval should go all the things. Uh, we have to define yeah. a criteria, right? Exactly. <clears throat> so typically it is when customer, uh, when the supplier or the customer, you can give it to the customer also. Um, they can come in and see their out, uh, Outstanding orders and you know, the payment uh, dues or their invoices. So in that case, that, the approvals will be role based because it cannot be employee based because customer will not have an employee ID. Right. So for this AR, what are the prerequisites? How do what are the setups required? We never covered that, right? No, we'll come to that. After we do the transaction, we'll come to setup. Okay. So here's one uh, customer that we can look at, fit and fine equipment. So, okay, and we pick up their ship to site as well. So we have completed our header part of it with the payment terms. Okay, the payment terms could be linked to the customer, so the default one will get picked up. So here, this item, it could be a finished goods item. In that case, you will get it from your inventory item master. Santosh? Yeah, yeah. So this finished goods could be from the item. So because of which you can get it from the uh, inventory also, or it could be a, a straightforward description that we are selling. Okay. So this and item is in a list of values, right? Yes. Yes. So what uh, what is the criteria for item available here? To available here? It has to be in the, defined in the inventory for it to be available here. So uh, any item uh, that you are selling. It does not have any status, nothing, right? Right. Now, this memo line that you see here, this is a straightforward list that also you can maintain for your uh, purpose. Like maybe you don't have items. You're not selling items. You're selling services. In that case, you could have a straightforward list of services that you're selling along with their price and things maintained. So once you maintain this, how much quantity you have to mention and you get the total no no it just means that what happened to the item item and blank no i'm saying you could you could either sell an item or you could sell a service okay here only so, description is mandatory item is not mandatory oh then how it will pick up because most of the things code will be the easy one to pick up right yeah, in, but if, what if you are not selling any item? Mm -hmm. You may be selling services. It will, it will have some uh, uh, code, right? No, not not really. Not not necessary always. No, you may not have implemented inventory at all. Mm -hmm. You you may just directly <clears throat> enter the uh, uh, item uh, description. In, you can put it in description. That's why they have the description as mandatory. Suppose you are doing an interface. Okay, with your uh, web uh, order management system. 
and you can bring your invoice from there. So whatever service or product you are selling, you can just put it in the description here. So as soon as I put the description, that will go uh, blank, is it? The item. Yes. Fit? You can either enter this or you may either enter this or this. But okay. description is mandatory. So if I directly enter the description, that will go blank. So if I want to edit, I cannot edit. I can only delete and uh, create a new thing, is it? Correct. For example, by mistake, I choose the description first. Instead of, uh, though I have an item code. Actually, actually, the item is linked to your, this, you know, you may have, see, when once I okay. create this memo line, it becomes again enabled. Got it. So suppose I have this, I want ambulance fee. The price changes here. The memo line can be defined any any yes it can it is a list that we can maintain in receivables okay not the oracle defined right so we have uh, let's say 50 days or uh, 50 days of you know 50 quantity of ambulance fee and that total comes out to be this much and as this is the line amount you will see at the top this line amount gets populated. So this part of it is a bit different from payables. If you remember in payables, we had to manually enter the header amount. If there is a mismatch, you know, after the tax was getting calculated, we had to go back and correct it. Okay. Here, system takes care of this by itself. Mm -hmm. So here, moment a tax is calculated, system will update the tax line and generate the total also. In our case, we don't have tax. We'll have to see this. Uh, right now, we are not manually doing it. So depending on the setup, the tax might get calculated also. See, the tax will okay. And the total amount is now 4078. So if you want to see the tax, you click on the tax determinants here, you will see this is the sales transaction. And, uh, there we were supposed the, we used to add a separate line like a tax item, right? Okay. Manually no, we should add. No, there also we can, uh, it was getting automatically calculated. Okay. Only thing that was not happening there was the line and the tax was not getting added together and put on the header. header. Here the total is being put on the header. So we don't have to go and update in the header. Got it? Got it. And uh, based on this, once you are done, the other thing that we have to do is there is a status here on the invoice. Okay, the status here is incomplete by default when you start entering. After you have entered all the details, you should complete the transaction. Complete means that is when the customer's outstanding gets hit. Till then, the customer's outstanding does not get hit. That means an invoice doesn't show up in its in his account. It will only show up when you complete it. So when you say complete, you get the invoice number. Yeah. So I say complete. The invoice transaction number was already there. The status will change to complete. Okay. Now this will be available to generate the accounting lines. Yes. Now see, we have these. We can do accounting draft. And view the accounting. So the accounting here in this case is receivable account is debited, revenue account is credited. So receivable account is debited. So we are paid. We are supposed to be getting from the customer. So that's the receivable account. Okay. And, and it is against our revenue, but 
tax amount is not our revenue. It is supposed to be paid to the government. So only the amount that we have generated in the line mm -hmm. that is in the revenue part. So when the tax amount will be shown as a debit from our end, maybe because when you pay to government, right? Correct. Correct. So which is the process to take care of that? That that is usually done either in payables or in uh, you you pay it to the government through the check or through uh, vouchers, and then you can enter the GL in a direct uh, journal in GL also to nullify the tax. Okay, so now this accounting lens is at the only the subledger level. We are not going to GL. Correct. Correct. So when you when we make an entry with the GL, so this account number will be, accounting lines number will be taken care of it. The same account number ten dot yes, whatever the yes, second. Yes, yes. So we'll do that next. So this was we had done it in draft mode, and then we can transfer post to ledger also. Okay. So once we do post to ledger, this will go all the way to general account. So, if everything is manual, is it here? In sense, for example, I have around thousand transactions. For every thousand transactions, I need to click on you know generating accounting lens and post to GL. Is there any process yeah, yeah, defined? Yeah, yeah, same accounting process is there. You can run the okay. accounting process; it will take care of it. Okay. So it will always look for the transactions which has which is complete. So even this, uh, usually the processes when invoices are generated, they are generated in bulk, right? Only large companies will be using these softwares. So they have, you know, so many hundreds, thousands of invoices generated. So in most cases, they have another custom software from or uh, other system where those invoices are generated. Or they can get it from order management also in Fusion. And then through the auto invoice process, they will transfer all the invoices into dump them into receivables. And once your invoice is generated, you can also see your invoice that you're going to send to your customer. You click on the view image and the invoice will be seen. Which one? Which which part? Once we click on this. Okay, okay. 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 So this will be enable only after which uh, which step then? Uh, once your invoice is completed, you're breaking. Uh, you're breaking, Saurabh. Uh, yeah. Saurabh, you're breaking. Once your once your invoice is completed, that is mm -hmm. when you will want to see your completed invoice. That as a image. Okay. Probably I didn't notice that as soon as you made the invoice complete, I didn't see the uh, image. Here, behind yeah. the scene, my invoice got generated. Okay. You can see this. Mm-hmm. We didn't have a salesperson, so the salesperson name commission is not defined. Is that commission? Is that say the salesperson name or the commission for salesperson? Name, name. They will not show the commission here right away on the invoice. Yeah, that's why. Sorry, yeah. <laughs> Generally, it will not happen. <laughs> it will only show the name. Correct. So. That was our uh, invoice that we generated, and uh, we can cancel this. Now, against this, if you click here, you can see the review the customer account details from here. Mm -hmm. Okay, when you click on customer account details, you will be taken to this particular page where you can. Look at the customer.
So meanwhile, sorry to ask you this. Yeah. What do you mean yeah. by charge account? Charge account basically means the account into which you are going to do the accounting. Okay. So it will be hitting that particular account. Okay. So see, this is the total open receivables. Means so far you are supposed to. This is what is receivable from your customer. Mm -hmm. Okay, and this is what is the total transaction. This is past due. That means he, this is outside his payment term. So rest of the invoices could be within the payment terms, like within thirty days, within sixty days. But the so much worth of invoices is beyond his dues. He should. So what is the count? Is count is the number of invoices? Yes, total well. number of invoices. Total number of transactions, and uh, this one yeah, sorry. of you know, transactions. Okay, and so out of thirty invoices, twelve of them are past due. And when you look at these activities here, it will show you the individual transactions. Total, mm -hmm. what is right now? This is the one which is receivable. So this is the one which is available. Total transaction due. Or, uh, this is the dates, right? Between this date and this date. So suppose you want to change the date from for the past one year, you want to see what are the total uh, dues. Okay. So individual transactions, you can click and see those transactions, and you can see what is the original amount, what is the current amount, what is the past due amount. It might have happened that you know in the past he you had generated an invoice, but he had or the customer had sent back certain items. So he thinks that you know nothing is due from him, but in your books of account it is showing everything is due. Mm -hmm. So in those cases also you might have to go back and do some rectification, or you know a lot of times what happens the customer sends back credit memo is not generated. You you remember you must we may have certain issues with Amazon, Flipkart, the charges you know we return it they don't record it. Although they once our account is created, we are happy with our money has come back, right? Suppose there was a wrong item that they had shipped. Mm -hmm. So after we raise a query or we tell them that hey guys, I ordered a pen, but you have sent me a pencil. So they will say okay, okay, our person will go and check. If that is true, we'll take it back. So they come collect the item back, and what you are looking for is a refund, and he will refund that pen amount, let's say two hundred rupees, back into your credit card account. You have paid by credit card, so they refund it. Once your amount comes in, that two hundred rupees, you are happy that your account has been created back. You have no further dues, and you forget about it, right? But in their books of account. They may not have updated it at all. Okay. They may not have recorded that that item has been sent back to you. The guy who collected it here, he kept it here. He never told the company there that I have collected it. Okay. So many gaps happen, right? So because mm -hmm. of those, there could be certain disputes. So. There may be a disputed amount also in the column here. Okay. Okay. So let's say we have this particular transaction here, with the one we entered today. Mm -hmm. So this was our transaction, and we have the actions here. So from the actions, you can view the image, you can view the balance detail, you can view the accounting, you can view the installments. View transaction detail activities. 
okay and uh, if you want if you want to look at the payment customer details you see them here invoice lines distributions you can see all of them here from that view itself so that is the view so anybody who is given access to that particular screen they cannot do any other transactions on that account from here okay now in case you want to do any adjustments or you mm -hmm. want to do any disputes you can come here and you can click on dispute or you want to view any adjustments you can click here and view them these are the adjustments that are here suppose you want to create an adjustment here you have to click on create and there is a receivable activity okay so mm -hmm. this adjustment is maybe there was some incorrect entries maybe some things that the customer did not ask for or some things that a customer wants back okay so it could be a part of the amount also so in that case you can raise let's say fred and you can say what type this is charges fred adjustment you have tax adjustment also let's say you you know sometimes what happens the material has been sent in a bad shape customer is furious that my material has got uh you know damaged so in that case i will have to give him some credit so right now this person doesn't have the approval limit set on this so this has been recorded but it is not yet approved it's saying pending approval so one question i have here uh, when you are trying to adjust let's just, just click on done please go to the previous screen because i wanted to see that the drop down list just just go back to adjust again because there was so many list of values oh that uh, list of act, uh, adjustment yeah yeah you are breaking you are breaking sir you are breaking hello this one hello Sir, are you breaking? I can't hear you now. Hello. Hello. Yeah, I can hear you now. Yeah. See now, yeah, take this transaction. What we created four zero seven eight dot twenty dollars. Okay. Can you hear me? Yes, I can. So it has been posted to GL, right? Not yet. Not yet. No, we did. La, we did. You're breaking. No, we, we You're breaking. Sir, I can't hear you. Sir, you are breaking. Hello. Hello. Sir, you are breaking. Hello. Yeah, can you I can. It's better. Okay. Yeah, tell me what you were saying. now we created on transaction of uh, $4000 right then we created accounting as above accounting and accounting also right uh, posted to gl also right correct now the customer will come back i want the complete refund hmm. okay in that case you still go to adjustment and do a transaction how do you do that in that case so because my entry should be delete not deleted basically you know uh, negated uh, in the gl now right when i do a refund so uh, can, can we see that how it we do i i will show you you just yeah. for now uh, what i have shown you is part of the amount was adjusted correct 
okay for now what i did i if you go to this adjustment only part of this account has got debited so this is the transaction distribution it will go and hit this particular distribution saying that fret account will be debited so that much 100 dollars worth of the fret account will be reversed so that will hit the transaction uh, entry also in the gl directly yes yes it will hit once you need not transfer no you need you need not post it again or what no this adjustment will again need to be posted okay that's what i have yeah step by step it will be posted so everything is same then right any transaction you create absolutely an adjustment or the payment whatever correct so you need to create a sub ledger accounting and uh, accounting lines yes okay so everything is treated as a transaction now correct now this was one of the things that we did that was adjustment okay now in some cases what is done is we also create what we call as sir can you give me 2 minutes i'll be back 2 minutes oh, okay i'll not take more than that okay not a problem सदा फोन चार्जे बसानो सदा टाइम घर चार्जे बसिए दो सो वट वी सॉज एडजस्टिंग एंड इन वॉस ओके नाउ द more uh, a robust way of doing this is adjustment is usually when you are only waiving off part of the invoice amount or something which is not related to the main service or product that for which you have sold okay so it could be maybe the uh, uh, freight charges or small changes that you have done so all those things you may or may not use them okay depending on your scenario both things are available to you one is creating a credit memo other one is creating adjustments okay next we'll see how we create a credit memo against our invoice for that we will go into this and you will see there is credit transaction here okay so when you click on credit transaction it will first ask you for what is your original transaction number mm -hmm. okay uh, so this is to this is to reverse the transaction now correct correct so it it was somewhere 4 4000 series it was <laughs> Incomplete. 
can't we pull it from the list of values uh, prompt button yeah yeah we can do that i am also uh, doing just that i am looking at the customer and against that customer i am looking at his transactions so the four five seven six this was the one right four five seven six seven Five, yeah. Seven, six, seven. So we now go to tra credit transaction and four five seven six seven and then you can you're breaking so click on this search <coughs> amount or you can press specify specify how much you are going to credit okay so maybe tax you will do the entire amount as credit and this one uh, credit percentage here maybe you will do 50 So based on that, you will get this fifty percent line, fifty percent tax. So total fifty percent of your invoice is being waived off. Got it? Okay. So you have fifty percent line amount, and correspondingly system has done the entire thing or you could just click credit entire balance okay if you do this credit entire balance an entire 100% is being waived off so the remaining balance becomes zero on this account got it you may want to give everything or maybe 50% mm -hmm. let's keep it 50% for now so that we will mm -hmm. be able to uh, have that invoice also and then you can say complete and close again if i want to now review that particular transaction I go to manage transactions. Four five seven six seven. Four five seven six seven. You are breaking, sir. Are you again? You are breaking. Hello. Transaction number. Yeah, I am not speaking anything. You see this now? Only the fifty percent amount is. This was the original transaction four five seven six seven. Okay, and how much? This is the. This was the original one, right? Correct. Again, against this, if I want to look at the balance details of this account, I will click View Balance Details, and it will show me so much amount has been created. So this particular screen gives me an entire summary of all the transactions that have happened on this particular transaction. So in that case, uh, initially we paid a complete amount. Later, it was credited back half of the amount to us, right? Mm. Or how it is? Correct. Correct. Initially, he did. We received. If he had paid this, the receipt should have come up. We raised okay. an invoice. We sent mm -hmm. him. The, we sent him the material also. He sent okay. back fifty percent. 
for which we give him the credit okay so okay. now his net outstanding is 2039 so that is what was showing up on my original transaction right but i may want to see that transaction also for my customer so i will go and say review customer account details and i will search for my customer and see it is showing me the credit memo also mhm mm 45768 correct so on this screen i can see all activities relating to my customer okay so once the credit memo is issued and we try to post it to gl it looks for the similar entries which was posted earlier and correct. try to compensate correct now we will go and pull up our credit memo and we can do the accounting individually or i'll show you how we run the process also we can okay. see this is the accounting and we can click on create accounting mm -hmm. so this will run the create accounting process okay so what do you want to see for which ledger let's say it is the us primary ledger what mode do you want to do create accounting and it is in final or draft mode final do you want to transfer to gl do you want to post to gl yes so all these parameters once you set it to yes see here they are not asking you whether you want to what type of categories and all these things that you have here different categories what you want to transaction so it will only do the transactions if you leave it blank it will pick up everything otherwise if you just want to do the transactions you can just pick up the transactions what is it end date is a period end date till, yeah till what date it will pick up all transactions so usually when we run these processes we'll run it not for one day or for you know two days maybe once a week we can run it every day also we can schedule the process to run on its own at night and it will create all your accounting and you it will be ready next day once we do this we can submit it so the maximum filter you can do is for the ledger transaction and the date correct and whether the, you know you want to do this accounting mode final final or draft will do final posting you may not post directly to gl you may say that i want to review it mm -hmm. in gl and then take it forward in companies what happens there are separate people who look after gl there is another person who looks after ar 
So the person who transfers from AR, he may transfer and give it in GL for the person in GL to review and then mm -hmm. post it to GL. In GL also, you have a process to run the posting. So the guy in GL will, who is in charge of GL, he'll submit that and run it. So this is the final uh, accounting line generation, not the sub level, uh, sub, sub ledger level, right? Correct. Correct. So for sub ledger level, also, we do have any such process or manual? No, no this one is will create it in sub ledger and transfer it in uh, GL. Okay. So, it a two in one. so when you say draft, uh, again, it will create or how it will work? Yes, draft means it is only within subledger. But subledger accounting is created, but it did not create any transaction in GL, but it will create as a draft. It will create only, yes, in subledger as drafts. When you say final, that is when it will create the final, it will generate and it will transfer over to GL. Okay. So when the, when we do a draft, how the uh, I know that accounting lines will not be generated, but it will how the field mapping will occur internally, how it will be shown to user for a review. The accounting, uh, you mean the uh, debit and credit? Yes, yes. We saw that now receivable revenue. That is how it will be shown. Okay, but it will not make an entry, right? In draft mode? Yeah. Yeah, it will not make an entry. Okay. In both the case, sublet and general. Okay. In uh, draft mode, it doesn't go to ledger at all. Yeah. Oh, it will limit in sublet only. Yes, in draft mode. Okay. It is just for intern for your own review. Okay. If you are happy, then only you will run it in final. Usually draft, what happens initially people run it uh, first couple of weeks, maybe after go live. After that, once they realize everything is going fine, it's not always possible to run draft for every transaction review. And then it looks great, but it is very painstaking. So okay. users normally, once they get used to, they see that, yeah, a couple of transactions are coming out fine. They will just let it go through directly. So we, we are now in general accounting. Okay. So we are going to see the journals. Santosh, you followed. We are in general accounting now. Yes, yes, yes. So in general accounting, everything is journals, we say that. So we click on manage journals. So it would have created in current period. So we'll say search. And uh, zero six two zero. So these are all the transactions that have come in. See the credit memo. Mm -hmm miscellaneous receipts, everything for this period, okay, for the primary ledger. So it shows what is the category. Now, if I want to look at this particular transaction,
this is the one we created. See, our original amount was 4078. Then we had reversed 50% of it. Got it. Now, if I want to look at the original transaction, I can click on this line. Okay. And it tells me it's a credit memo. Santosh, we can there? see the original transaction, is it? Yeah. No, this was, this is in, still we are in, journal, in the GL only. To look at the original transaction, this is the view transaction here. You know, what I'm saying is, very first time before creating a credit memo, we created some accounting lines, right? Oh, okay. No, not, no, this is not that one. That one no, is this one. But we can still see that, right? Yeah, yeah, here, this okay. one. Okay, okay. See this 4078? And when you click on this, transaction type invoice. And then when we click on this, we will see what is the current state. So if you want to look at the view transaction, this is the force for this now is from receivables. This is the four, five, seven, six, eight, the invoice, the credit memo, sorry, not the invoice, the credit memo. Got it. If you want to look at the balance detail transaction activities from here, you can again look at that. So this is a view to show you what are the things that are there. Got it? Yes, sir. These are the tax lines. This is the actual amount. So when you click on this, you will see this is the actual amount of your trade. So this is, these are the revenue receivable. These are the different accounts that get hit. And this one, 2039, this is the invoice. Uh, against this particular invoice 45767 so when I click on this transaction this is the credit memo let me look at the invoice what is the invoice So what are the challenges you see? We have a transaction AR. Okay. Yeah. And someone has gone directly and made a manual entry in the GL. Is it possible like to do like that? Yeah, yeah. In that case, what challenges you see? Because there's no sub ledger accounting lines. Yes. That's a big it, what happens is it throws the two systems out of sync. Correct. Which is not a recommended uh, step. Sometimes it may happen because business users won't know ah, the business process. No, business users actually they knowingly do it. Okay. First of all, business users, anybody who doesn't need access to GL will never get access to it. Mm -hmm. Or should not get access to it. Right? Only if it is my work related, I should get access to it. Correct. And it is work related means it is my duty to know what I should be putting in and what I should not be putting in. Mm -hmm. Correct. So moment I do those kind of things, it means that I'm knowingly putting in a journal entry directly in GL without putting it in receivables. People so do that a lot just to take care of the month end processes or for balancing purposes and all that. 
I know, but what challenges we face? That's one major challenge that you know receivables and GL is out of whack. So they don't tally. So you should one should not be doing that. But it becomes very difficult end of the month now when there is hundreds of things to be done. Mm -hmm. They will say, hey, "What the heck? Let me just go and do it." So, <clears throat> in that case, let's assume that we found such one entry for a transaction where it has been posted directly to GL, mm. but not in the subledger accounting lines. Mm. <clears throat> in that case, how we, how do we take the reference of the same accounting line generated there? We, we would be able to do it. If you find something in GL which is not in AR, you cannot mm -hmm. tie it back to AR. You have to reverse it in GL, go and put it in receivable, and then again transfer it to GL. Okay, that's that what I'm right looking for. Way of doing it. Okay, that's what I'm looking for. Okay. Most people say, "Are ya chodo? Let's tally it and complete the process for this month." And uh, why we discourage those kind of things is, moment they do that, na, they will forget in the following month to reverse it. The previous one that we were seeing, that was our credit memo. Now see, this is the sales invoice that okay. got generated. Okay, now I'm still in the GR. <clears throat> so, when you're trying to reverse the entries in the GL, is there any Status where you should not do. You should anything. not do. Or uh, like you know, <clears throat> like uh, the entries in the GL. For example, you're doing it for the previous year because the year year has closed. Can you do that? No. No. In that case, you should not be doing. Okay. Because I don't know much on accounting, so all the dumb questions will. Sort of, no, no problem. You are welcome to us. So, see. Okay. Now, here you see these are. This was our original invoice, four zero seven eight. See the category here is sales invoice. Mm -hmm. If you recollect, a few minutes back, which what we were seeing was the credit memo. Correct. Now this is the original invoice. So when I click on that invoice, this is the invoice created. Initially, when we created that invoice, this is the transaction number, originating number. And if I click on view transaction, I'll be taken to receivables and I'll be seeing that original transaction. Got it? Yeah. So this was the original invoice that we created. <clears throat> then we did a transfer to GL also, and then we entered a credit memo against it. And then we transferred that credit memo transaction over to GL also, and we are now reviewing all those things in GL. Now see, this is the status. This is posted. Santosh. Yeah. Okay. So this is the one which is posted. So in case you want to, you know, uh, do any changes or you want to enter a fresh journal, you could do that. Okay. And uh, depending on, you know, how you are. Uh, what is the purpose? You can review those transactions. All of these things you are doing in GL. Got it? Yeah. So I come back to receivables now. So today till what time you want to do? Another half an hour till 10.30. Uh, 
10 30 okay <clears throat> unless you don't have any appointments <laughs> no no that's fine uh, because why i'm saying this those two guys are on a, they're not there right if we go uh, uh, because i don't them. want to move too much ahead also and you know we can you can in the meanwhile go back yeah it's a big module yeah see this till what we covered is all the simple steps obviously amit and rakesh will be able to understand yeah right? Or we can stop here. Not a problem for me. No, we'll we'll complete this transaction thing. Okay. Yeah. Uh, then we can uh, receipts. We can do in next class then. Okay, sir. Not a problem. Yeah. So see, right now when we were doing these transactions, these uh, there were adjustments, right? Now this particular user did not have the authority to uh, approve it, so it was not allowing. I'll log in as another user. I'll sign out. This is the implementation uh, login actually. So I log in as a user now. And I again go to receivables. Billing. So our transaction was four five seven six seven. So I will manage transactions. What are we doing now? Uh, I'm going to be adjusting that invoice. When we entered that uh, adjustment last time, it said the authority, the person did not have the approval authority. So here, mm -hmm. you see, this was our original invoice. Now there are certain adjustments to be done. So for that, I can dispute the transaction. Maybe the customer has said, the material is incomplete or the material is not as per my specifications or I can go and give some adjustments to the customer so for that I can go back to this I can specify an adjustment reason like say Refund or write off this much, and then I can submit it. And see, because I have the approval limit, it is set to approve. Okay. And it shows me the action history at the bottom. If I now go and look at this transaction here, balance details. See, this 100 is coming under FRED because we had put it as FRED adjustment. So the total adjustment here is this. Now this adjustment, it can be positive, it can be negative. Since this is positive here, it has increased the amount. Okay, this is balance. Yes. Balance. Now, it might happen that I have done it by mistake. I want mm -hmm. to go back and reverse it so I can go to manage adjustments. And see, this one I can't do anything now. So, what I'll have to do, I'll have to enter another adjustment. This receivable activity I'll have to pick up, threat adjustment. And this time, I will create 200 worth. 
Why minus two hundred? Because last time it was plus, right? I want to mm -hmm. take care of that. So I will say refund or charges or whatever. No, you are trying to reverse the adjustment, right? So you need to enter the same amount. No, what I am trying to do is instead of reducing last time, it had increased. Okay, got it. Got it. So I have to now put in the double amount. So once I do this, now see it becomes approved. So minus two hundred plus hundred becomes minus hundred. Correct. So I go back. I look at this action balance. View balance. Correct. So this adjustment it will not show you individual breakup. It will show you the net figure. Okay. Lot of times, you know, you might have seen customers where there are a lot of invoices which are outstanding. Over a period of time, they realize they will never get this amount back. Okay. So in those cases, what they you will have to do is you will have to go back and write it off. So in those cases, you can create a. There is there are two ways of doing it. One. you can either write create a credit memo or you can go back and create a charge like this, this adjustment that we were doing na right off okay so, so if you see here there were manage adjustments mm -hmm. receivable activity you could have adjustment called bad debt okay <clears throat> that you will never get back mhm mm so you can write off that entire amount also so that adjustment amount is the remaining amount is being written off okay i'll not save it but i'll just this is just for your information Again, the same process needs for every transaction. The same process needs to be followed. Subledger of lines and generate. Okay. The small things. What happens? We once we run that create invoice thing, na uh, create accounting, that will handle everything. It will transfer all the transactions. Okay. That's the best way to run it with a blank uh, for the transaction type. all right so this was as far as our regular transactions was concerned uh, while we are on this topic let me just go and show you on the uh, setup side we talked about transaction type the tra transaction type of definition is very important because your accounting transaction accounting head are derived from there so if i uh, oh manage transaction types So when I go to manage transaction types, I can do a search. Let's say uh, this one only one is showing up. So I think you need to log in as an implementer, I believe, right? Yes, yes. So see, if I depending on my access, I don't have anything here, right? So I will have to log out and log back in as the implementer.
So once I go to manage transaction types and I do a search, I will get all the transaction types that are defined. So against this, let's say we look at an invoice type. This is the invoice. Okay. When I click on this invoice, this is the reference data set. If it is linked to a specific legal entity, I can link it or I can leave it blank. It will apply to every legal entity. Name, description, this is the class, okay? And transaction class, which is invoice, transaction status, and uh, invoice. This is the corresponding credit memo. So for this type of invoice, this will be the credit memo type that will be used. So those can be linked to each other. payment terms and these are the accounting that you have here. Just give me a minute. Huh? Yeah. If you look at this, I'll just be back. Santosh. Yes, sir. Yeah. 
So, um, do you have any question on this? Uh, no. So, the main crux of all the transactions that you see here comes from this setup. So, if your transaction type is properly done, rest of the things will flow through. This, all this GL accounting that you see here, these are the accounting codes. And you can reuse the same uh, transaction for different business units as well, as and when they are linked, like the same transaction, you can link it to multiple business units also. Only the ledger is changing here, and the corresponding values are changing account head see the account 311 if you go to another business unit this is 402 now yeah. and there might be certain transactions which you do not want to post to gl in that case, you will say post to GL can be disabled also. So that transactions, those transactions will not go to GL. So what is allow freight? Allow freight is uh, if you want to, like all these international shippings, no? suppose mm -hmm. uh, companies, they are producing something in China and then they are moving this to India or some other country, there's a freight that is charged. Do you want to show that separately? Or in some cases, they include it in the price itself. So in that case, FRET will be a separate account and there will be a separate line for FRET which will get accounted into in the separate account mentioned here. At the transaction level, when you are entering your invoice, you could have a separate line for FRET. Okay. Now, from this transaction type, there is an auto accounting that is derived. So, okay. But let me, before going to auto accounting, let me show you the credit memo also. So, it's almost similar. What type of transaction and what type of uh, records uh, the accounting heads, payment terms, all of those are created here, recorded here. And the creation sign, see, this one will be with a negative sign. In case of invoice, it is with a positive sign. Clear? Okay. Now, other than invoices and credit memos, you might have other types of other types of transactions also. For example, debit memo. Debit memo means it is a transaction which is not directly related to your line of business. For example, interest, bank charges. Okay. Those things, you can have it created as a separate transaction type. Got it? So, it will be created separately you can have it by different names and those you can enter at the time of generating your where you generate your transactions if you are migrating some data like this people soft see this migration so mm -hmm. these are invoices transactions that you are migrating from another environment Maybe the legacy was a PeopleSoft for the customer. They are now moving from PeopleSoft Financials to Fusion Financials. So you could migrate all your invoices from there.
and you can create different uh, transaction types as per your need. Okay. One last thing before we uh, close the session today. Uh, based on these transaction types, there are certain accounting rules. You know, when you saw that uh, invoice or the credit memo, the accounting rule that got generated, how did it know where to pick up from? Because we, a lot of times, we enter different transactions at different levels, right? So for that purpose, we define the auto accounting rules, which will specify where is what? So for this, where will it pick up the receivable account from? For the US one business unit, 101 is constant. That means every time it will pick up the company name for US one business unit as 101. The line of business, account, cost center, product, these are the segments for the receivable account. It will pick up from your it will pick up from your transaction type. The transaction type we saw just now. Santosh? Yes, sir. Um, yeah. Are you following? Yes, yes. So for each of our account types, receivable, revenue, tax, freight, uh, unearned revenue, unbilled receivable, all of this, the entire, all the segments of my chart of accounts has to be generated. So where will it generate it from is what we are defining in this particular accounting rule. In case of revenue, if you see, it is picking up from the site level. There are different options here. You can pick up from the lines, you can pick up from the salesperson, transaction type or from the site. The other ones are picking up from the transaction type. That means when you are entering it on invoice, the transaction type which is on the invoice it will look for the account information from there and pass it on. Is it making sense? Yes, sir. Okay. Probably it got a bit too technical, huh? No, no. So this is how. No, I'm no, I not getting confused, or you know, I'm not in a dilemma as I was at the payables page. Oh, okay. Right. Yeah, because... actually, more you do, na, these things will become clear. Don't yes. Worry. You just, uh, you know, do these transactions on your own, and if okay. you get any issues, let me know. I'm there, you know. So more you do, na, these things will become clear for you. Sure. So these are the two important setups that we have on the receivable side, the transaction type and the auto accounting rule, because that is where your accounting information is derived. Okay. Okay. And these are the other setups. We were talking about the memo lines, remember? Yes. We had the drop down ambulance fees and uh, one year service contract. So this is the one year service contract. So it gives, it comes with a list price also. So you can put in a list price, which will default. So this is how you can create your own list of values for your transaction. We'll have us. Uh, we'll also talk through the um, setups a little more. We'll run through them. Okay. Uh, 
next class we'll be talking about the receipts that is the customer making the payments and we recording them okay the system. okay so we'll stop here today mm -hmm. you have any questions at this point of time no sir okay have a look see if you find if you have any questions we can take that so, so let me go to my you know yeah. let me map this to my requirement document what i have sure sure so that I